left is creating some binary ionic compounds. I'm going to write down names on the board, and we're going to write down what the cation is with its charge, what da write down what the anion is with its charge, and then we're going to crisscross the numbers and get our final answer. Okay? So, my first one is aluminum oxide. What your responsibility is, is to have that periodic table and look and see where aluminum is and remember what the charge of aluminum is going to be. Remember how I told you guys, the fixed charge elements, the fixed charge metals are group 1A, group 2A, aluminum, gallium, zinc, cadmium, and silver. And I told you that aluminum is plus three, so remember that. So we're going to write down Al3+. plus. Okay, oxide. What is oxide? Oxide, remember, those are the nonmetals. So you go over to your periodic table. We said the halogens are minus one. Oxygen, sulfur, and selenium are minus two. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic are minus three. So oxides are minus two. So we write O2 minus. Then what do you do? You take the numbers, not the pluses and the minuses. You take the numbers and you just crisscross them. So you go Al, they have to be subscripts, guys. You bring the two down here and the three over here. And you've got a perfect formula of this binary compound. This is the formula for aluminum oxide. This is huge. If you can do this, this is a big deal in chemistry. Okay, barium iodide. Barium, again, it helps to know where your elements are. It helps to know what the symbol is. Remember first lecture, I told you guys, you gotta know those symbols. Those, it's, it's just like trying to read, not knowing the alphabet, guys. So barium is a group 2A metal. So group 2A is always plus two. You write Ba2 plus, okay? Iodide is a halogen. So minus one, I minus one. We crisscross the numbers, not the pluses and the minuses. And then you have Ba I two. Because this is a one here, we just never show a one. Crisscross the one here, the two here, you've got barium iodide. Okay, calcium sulfide. Calcium, group 2A metal. Just a little bit. Calcium. Two plus, so it's just like barium, plus two. Sulfide, look over there it, on your periodic table. It's a group 6A, just like oxide, sulfide, sel selenide. Do you remember all those? Those are all minus two because they need two electrons to fulfill the octet rule. So S2 minus. Okay, we're using this crisscross technique. You put a two here and a two here. Ca2. S2, but here's the deal, pay attention. You've got to reduce this. Since they both can be divided by the same number, you must reduce. I'm gonna put it in capitals here, must reduce. You are not allowed to have subscripts that are both divisible by the same uh, number, okay? So this is divided by two, this is divided by two. So your final answer, this is illegal, final answer is CA. So you, the crisscross technique works beautifully. You just always have to reduce after that. Okay, now let's kick it up a notch. What if we have some variable charge metals? Now, if I just wrote lead oxide or iron oxide, how are you supposed to know which charge metal to use because remember how I told you lead and iron are both variable charge metals and in that previous video I told you that iron can be plus two or plus three and lead can be plus two or plus four. Here's the thing when you've got a variable charge metal in the name you have to put a Roman numeral to tell me which one it is. So you put the Roman numeral in the name not in the formula in the name. What do I mean by that? You can't write iron oxide. This illegal. 
What must you do instead? You must tell me which iron you're talking about. Iron Roman numeral three oxide. So what you do is you write down the name of the variable charged metal, you write down the Roman numeral in parentheses, and then you write down which nonmetal you're talking about, okay? So when you see this Roman numeral, you immediately know what the charge of the ion uh, of the of the metal ion is. The Roman numeral tells you that it's plus three. If it was Roman numeral one, it would be plus one. Roman numeral two, plus two. Roman numeral three, plus three. Roman numeral four, plus four. Make sense? Okay. So this is Roman numeral three. So that means it's Fe three plus. Okay. Oxide, O2 minus. How did I know that? Because on the periodic table, look, see where oxygen is. Remember, it needed two electrons to look like the noble gas. And we said that all groups 6A nonmetals are always minus two. Okay, so now it's exactly the same. We're going to crisscross Fe2, O3. Perfect. That is the formula for iron three oxide. Okay, so now I could write down anything and you will be able to figure out the formula. This is huge, guys. This is a big, big, big deal in chemistry. So you can actually read all sorts of really cool names for binary. I know it's not that exciting for many of you, but I just think it's just amazing. If you can learn this, it's just get really excited and proud of yourselves. Um, I can write any binary ionic compounds and you're going to immediately know the formula of it. So please go show off to your family and friends. Um, so I'm going to write a few down for you. Lead, Roman numeral 4, sulfide. Um, zinc, um, iodide. Uh, cesium. Phosphide, copper, Roman numeral one, um, nitride. Okay, so I put four different ionic compound names, binary ionic compound names on the board. Notice that I have a Roman numeral for this one and a Roman numeral for this one. Why are there Roman numerals here? Because lead and copper are both variable charged metals. Why don't I have a Roman numeral for zinc and for cesium? Because those are fixed charge metals. So it's really important for you guys to know which ones are the fixed charge metals. Remember the fixed charge metals, one more time, group 1A, group 2A, aluminum, gallium, zinc, cadmium, silver. Consider all other metals variable charge. Okay, that will make your life so much easier. All right, so the one, this is, has a, oh, and by the way, you can never, ever, ever put a Roman numeral in the formula. You only put it in the name, and you never, ever, ever put a Roman numeral in the name of a fixed charge metal. You only put it in the name of a variable charge metal. All right, so what are we gonna do? Let's do lead four, I'm gonna do everything in red now. Lead four is PB four plus, that's what lead four is. Sulfide is S two minus. How did I know that? Again, periodic table. Sulfur is in group 6A. Group 6A nonmetals, as I told you in a previous video, are all minus two because they need two electrons to fulfill the octet rule and look like the nearest noble gas. And this, they're telling me which lead to use. They're telling me to use lead four. That's what this Roman numeral means. So you crisscross the charges to become, crisscross the numbers, sorry, PB2, S4. Can the two and the four both be divided by the same number? Yes, they can both be divided by two. So you got to reduce it and it becomes PB2. S2. What did I do? I divided this by 2, it became 1. Divided this by 2, it became 2. So the formula for lead for sulfide is PbS2. Okay, zinc iodide. We know that zinc is a fixed charge metal and it's plus 2. 
z cubed plus. Iodide is I minus 1 because it's a halogen. All right, crisscross. Vm I2. Okay, cesium phosphide. Cesium is a group 1A metal plus 1. Phosphide is P3 minus because nitride, phosphide, arsenide are all group 5A. Best way you guys can practice these is to just create little index cards with all the different monoatomic ions and all of the all of the cations, all of the anions. Just pick one from here, one from here, put them together and create some formulas for yourselves, okay? Um, Crisscross. Okay, three comes down here, one comes here. And then finally, copper, one nitride. And obviously, obviously, you need to know the symbols. Like if you're going to write Ca for copper, very big problem. So Cu plus one. Nitride, nitrogen, picks up three electrons. So it's an anion that has a minus three. Crisscross, you end up with Cu3n. Okay, good. Best way to get really, really, really good at this is to just practice with your ions. Know the charges, know how the, the simple, easy technique of crisscrossing, and you'll be good. Okay, the next video is going to kick it up a notch. What we're going to do is we're, I'm going to give you some formulas, and you're going to have to name them, okay? All right.